I just tweeted this and it's it's not that funny but like look at the guy doing the little leprechaun job <laughs> How you been? I just hit the octopus in the head. I'm sorry, buddy. Today, I'm going back in time a little bit. I am going back to my first time listening to a series that I haven't done in a couple of months. My bad. It's not that I haven't listened to things for the first time, because obviously I have, but I was doing like a format that I really enjoyed and then I just stopped doing because my channel got crazy. But I'm going back to that today and I'll be listening to Isaac Dunbar for the very first time. I've been getting comments about him kind of here and there for a while and more recently I got a ton of comments about him. I was like, you know what? It's time. We're listening to Isaac Dunbar. I don't know anything about Isaac. This is another one of those videos, guys, where I'm going in 125% blind. I've seen a picture of him that that's it. The one picture I've seen of him is the one on Spotify that's like his icon. That's literally all I know about Isaac. I don't know why, but I feel like I've got a lot of the comments on like Conan and Cave Town type videos. I'm not sure. I have no idea like what his music style is. I have no idea. Again, going in blind, this is always the scariest way to do things. So as always with my old first time listening to videos, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go onto Google, see, you know, who he is, a little bit about what he does, etc, etc. Because I don't know what to think about this boy and I want to know. I think he's a child. And when I say child, I mean like younger than me. Like even if it's a year younger than me, I'm like, oh, a child. Boom. A child. All right, guys, let's look him up. Let's hope I spell his name right. Because I know Ash didn't. Did anyone else see that tweet or whatever it was? I don't know. It was kind of funny. I mean, you spelled my name wrong, but... <laughs> Not Isaac Newton, can you imagine? Here he is, Isaac Dunbar, whoop whoop. Oh, what is this photo? Excuse me? All right, apparently you have 10 times more just style and aesthetic than I do. Oh, that's not surprising. Have you ever looked at my face? Isaac Dunbar is an alternative pop singer songwriter. Oh, alternative pop singer songwriter. I'm ready. From Massachusetts. Yes! I live in Rhode Island, that's why I got so excited about that. Oh my god, he is a child. He is 17 years old. He is younger than my brother. Oh my god, wait. Let me look at more pictures. This kid looks like- He is 17 and this is the style he has- Like, like look at this outfit. I wish I could. I wish I could. Look how cool he looks. Oh my god, why did I just get hardcore Michael Jackson vibes from this right here? Is it the gloves? It's gotta be the gloves, right? What? Are you for real? Is this real? Oh my god, he has like every amount of style, every amount of style. Cause that's a normal English phrase. He has like all the style I wish I did. Oh my god, he looks like he's probably even younger in this photo. Are you kidding me? Look at this, oh my god, look how cute. Oh, this is adorable. I'm checking out your website. Oh, oh, he's got moves. He's got, he's got vibes. That's what he's got. From this little, look at the vibes. Oh my god, the vibes. We love you. Guys, my first ever TikTok blow up is happening. My ego is peaking right now. <laughs> Good for you. Oh my god, wait, this is such a relatable tweet though. Quick, I need the most psychological mind fucking movie to illegally stream on one, two, three movies tonight. I prefer scary, but anything that makes you will suffice. <laughs> what? I almost just choked. Why am I relating so hard to this boy right now? Literally, psychological thrillers are the best movies ever. Actually, drop your psychological thriller racks down below because I want to watch all of them. Let me see his Instagram quick. I'm not logged in, I don't think, so it's gonna kick me out, but that's okay. Oh no, I'm logged in. Okay. Oh, thanks, guys. Oh my god, wait, I love this. <laughs> that's a fun photo. I don't know what this is, but I appreciate it. Okay, all right, cool. My computer, if you can't hear it, it's gonna explode in about four seconds. So we'll move on to the music listening portion, but you guys know I just like to get a little feel for who they are before I listen to their music. I just feel like that makes sense. Maybe it doesn't, but I think it does. I don't know. Alrighty. Before the landscapers start going nuts, let's listen to some Isaac Dunbar. What I think I'm gonna do, because I did look at his page to try to figure out like what the heck we're gonna do. I think I'm gonna listen to both of his albums. The 2019 album and the 2020 album. And this album is called Balloons Don't Float Here. And this is where that little adorable picture is from of him with the balloons. It's really cute. Although I do get a little bit of like Pennywise It vibes here. Um, You'll float too. Such interesting looking. Look at these titles. Blueberry Brows? I wanna know. Let's look at this particular track list. My favorite song, 
on this album is going to be, I think it's gonna be Blueberry Brows because like, like what, you know? <laughs> Let's just jump right into it with the first track, which is Pharmacy. Hello? Hurt me? We gonna pause quick. He is my vibe. He is 125% my vibe. He also definitely sounds like Conan Gray to me. It just has that same kind of like feeling that same genre, the same, just the same kind of stuff. I don't, I don't know how else to say it. It's just very Conan. So I understand why I got the Isaac Dunbar comments on my Conan Gray videos. This is such an itch. Oh my God, he did not write his own songs. There's no way. Cause he would have been like 15 when he wrote that. There's no way. Purple and blue fingers, but why? I like what the way he says prescribed with like minimal production under it. Ooh. Oh, the song isn't over. We in the middle. Okay, I thought we were done. We're not done. We are in a dreamland. Why does he keep saying hurt me? I say, you, you small child. No one wants to hurt you. Yep, this is gonna be my vibe. I feel like I'm gonna have like a very similar reaction to this that I did to Conan where I'm gonna be like, yes, 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 and then I'm going to just listen strictly to him for like three weeks straight and nothing else. Next on the album, you guys, is Woman on the Hills. Also, I wanna say I love that the track list is all in lowercase letters because I prefer to write it all in lowercase. Totally random note, just thought I'd bring it up. <laughs> oh God. Hello, what? Oh, the park. I love this. I love the pre-chorus, like the melody of the pre-chorus is so fun. Layers, we know how we love layers here. Alright, damn. Okay, the lyric in this that hits me, I think, the hardest. She needs more from you. She needs less of you. Ouch. And he says in this little blurb here that the woman in the hills is a metaphor more for Hollywood in a sense and how, you know, it can take people and change them in ways that they didn't necessarily want to be changed, which is 125% true. Why do I always say 125%? That's so annoying. Next song is Blonde. I'm blonde. I wish I wasn't. I'd rather have pink hair. And I've had pink hair in the past, but it was a lot of upkeep and um, not exactly interview friendly, so... <laughs> We had to give up on that beautiful life that we had. I love his production. Oh. I thought we were gonna drop, we didn't. I wasn't, I was off. All I can do to this song. I can't dance if you couldn't tell. So this is what we're doing. I like this lyric. Give me another taste of what it's like to waste years with you. Just let me buy it. 
Yes, I love when they do that first line, then bring in the production. That's a common thing, but I love it. Ow! <laughs> Anyone else get hurt today? Not a blanket nor a hug could keep me quite as snug as the empty lies and broken sighs that you kept chained to me. <laughs> that was just really sad. Like, I don't know how to like comment on something where I'm like, ooh, that's deep and depressing. <laughs> All right, we're just gonna keep going. Um, Next song on this album is Ferrari. Yes! I love this kind of stuff. That like crackle, static. Oh, I'm feeling a potential favorite song on the album right here already. I love how he starts off. Millions of ghosts have walked my streets. Where did they go? And I can like feel based on the aesthetic or the atmosphere of the song, I can see like and feel as if I am on an empty, very empty, eerily quiet street at one o'clock in the morning with like really dim street lights. I don't know why, but I feel it. Why are they cold? Good question. It's like I got a body in the back of my Ferrari that I don't even own. Wait, what? Maybe if you took my lungs away, I wouldn't breathe the air that makes me Billie so Eilish says hello. Oh, this is my favorite. Oh my god, I love this so much. Like, straight up so much. Oh my god. <laughs> There's that oh again. <laughs> Just leave me be. That's my favorite song. It's so good. Ah! Oh wait, this person said, hold on. Does he not even own the body or the Ferrari? That's such a good question. Wait, 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 wait. Oh my God, I actually read it as, it's like I got a body that I don't even own, but I think it's supposed to be a Ferrari that I don't even own. Why did I read it like a body? I'm so stupid. Okay, but that's definitely, that's my favorite. The end. Period. Where are we going next? Next we have Cologne. Possibly. I like this lyric. Why do I want to see this boy live? I feel like it would be so much fun. Am I wrong? writing this if you're not going to change i hope you see this and it makes you feel a type of way was he really writing these lyrics at 15 because i love singing along to this song too it's really fun <laughs> doesn't matter if you're not good at singing you can do it anyway all your dreams kids uh, is she okay? No. Okay, I don't know. Like, now, I'm like, either Cologne or Ferrari are my faves, but I loved both of those last two tracks a lot. Ah! All right, we've made it to the second to last track on this album. Again, we're going to listen to the 2021 also. This one is called Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend. 
I like these little notes. up here that's always interesting i don't think it's my favorite i do really i do still like it i i think listening to this album more i'm gonna love the whole thing like top to bottom but this one i don't think was my favorite as of now still really cool still like a lot but i think ferrari and cologne specifically i liked a lot more the next song on the album is blueberry brows the last song on this album actually Oh, this song is so pretty. This is beautiful, okay? This song is so, okay, it's just beautiful. Also love the whole lyric about dancing under neon signs. I just love it. pre-chorus I love so much I see it all in slow motion yes Not me about to cry right now. No, no, no. Mm -mm, not that. Have you guys read his explanation for this song? Because he says it's a really personal song. I don't want to go too in depth with the lyrics because it's a long story. At one point, I wasn't even going to release it. I thought it was trash. But then I played around with it a couple of weeks ago and it became one of my favorites and it just felt perfect. It felt like the last page of the story. I love that. I also love that he says it feels like the last page of the story because it does feel like a really good closing song for the album specifically when the last lyric is don't run away from love we'll find a way i like that as a message so to finish an album with that lyric is so beautiful <laughs> okay nope we're good i think as of now some of my favorites on this album are going to be ferrari cologne and blueberry brows those are my three favorites now i'll let you guys like know at the end of the video i'll rank all the songs all together um and again that'll be after a couple days of re-listening to the album so oh oh we're moving on to the next album oh, i'm very excited so that album was what 2019 and then the newer album is of course 2020 so we're gonna see isaac dunbar a year later probably a little more mature oh boy it's called isaac's insects what a title kind of made me think of um boys will be bugs by cave town just the bug connection that's literally the only connection there whatsoever so we've got seven songs on this album looking at the track list wait a second the second track on this album i literally just filmed my sawayama video the other day is that second track not the same exact one from the other that's the same title did he cover it oh i don't know when we get there we'll listen but anyway what do i think is going to be my favorite suicide i have a feeling might be one of my favorites just because I like really sad songs and based on the title it's probably gonna be really sad so we're gonna jump into this album with track one which is makeup drawer 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 how do you say drawer hello 
Did we take a jump or did we take a jump? It's still Isaac, but it's a different Isaac. Oh my god. I'm bobbing. Do you see the glittery glitter situation? Look at this! Are you kidding me? Oh my god. That song was such a bop. It was so much fun. Oh my god, it seems like there's such a maturity over the course of even one year. Not that like his earlier stuff was immature, it's just like there is definitely a jump. So the next song is Like the Boys. Again, I can't pronounce that first part, but this is a song, or at least the same title of a song, that's on Sawayama's, Rina Sawayama's album. Is it the same song? Did he cover it? Let's listen. Hold on, I need to remind myself what the other version of this sounds like. So it's very different. Wait, it's very different. I'm so confused. Why does it have the same? Why are they the same title? What am I missing? I do not want to be like boys. Yeah, me neither. Now I know how to pronounce it. Oh, I like the way. I like the way he pronounced it there. Okay, I spent a lot of that song, I apologize, looking, um, like Googling to find out what the connection is between the two songs, but it appears that there isn't really a connection so much as they just both happen to release a song with the same exact title around the same exact time, which is super weird, 100% super weird. I think I liked this song better than Rina's, but this one is not one of my favorites, I think, of Isaac's. I liked the first one on this album better than this one. I still liked it, but it probably was my favorite. I also was really distracted trying to figure out the connection and didn't pay as close attention to the song as I probably should have. I got distracted, I do apologize, but again, more listens will really decide where that song belongs for me. Next song on the album, we are going to Isaac's Insects, we are going to the title track. I love title tracks, I love finding out how they really encompass the album as a whole, so. Let's go find out. Hmm? I don't like that. Oh my god. It's not that I don't like the song, I don't like the thought that there are bugs on my walls judging me at night. Not a fan. They what? They think I'm hot and haunt my room? What? Oh, this song is about fame. Oh. Oh, I love that. Yeah, this is kind of a really interesting take on like, basically the amount of hate people receive when they're in the spotlight. Voice modification is really strange to me. Like it sounds cool, but it's strange. This is so gory. What? Ow! I cannot believe how deep that song is. Oh, it is kind of disturbing too. I love this take on fame and just basically haters. I hate that word haters, but that's essentially what it is. Like, just the critics, people come around and I hate how people feel like just because someone's a celebrity, they can say whatever they want about them on the internet. Like, it's still, it's still not okay to be mean to people. Like, I don't know why it's suddenly okay to be mean when it's a celebrity. We're like, yeah, they're trash. I'm like, that's, they're still a human. I don't, I don't get it. I, I, uh, it hurts my brain. The third verse, insects want to cut my head off. They want my eyes and beating heart. Insects want my legs seared off. I mean, I love it. I love this song lyrically as like the meaning and to have it as the title track says a lot about the album. Oh 
my god, and he is only 17? That is just like a really deep track and I don't know what else to say about it. It says written by Isaac Dunbar. Did you actually write these songs, Isaac? Because, oh my god, you're so talented. The next song on the album is Boy. Just Boy. Boy. Boy oh boy. Caitlin, shut up. It's very space-esque. What? I did not expect it to go like and then take this kind of turn here. This is not what I expected it to sound like. This is... Where are we going? Time, T-H-Y-M-E. Oh, I get it. With the E in and all that. If only we were right, seasoned with time. Good lyric, especially with time being spelled like time. Oh, you're hanging on your boy. You're hanging on me, boy. Oh. Oh, I feel like he would be so good live. Don't you think so? Production, instrumental, we are here for it. I really liked that one. I liked the like herb in the morning time and then the time spelled T-H-Y-M-E. That one, I think that one's a grower for me because right now I'm like, yeah, it's good, but I can see like once I learn the lyrics of that song and like actually listen to it a bunch more times, I'm going to love it. The next song on this album is called Scortins Creek? Scortins? Scortins. Scortins Creek. I think I'm, that's an easy word to pronounce and yet I'm still struggling. Ooh, this sounds interesting already. Find a what? Oh, find a scary film to watch? Wait, 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 wait. I find a scary film to watch. Remember that tweet from earlier that we looked at? <laughs> Funny. I love that verse. Lyrically, I think this song is like super nostalgic almost. Oh, this is so cute. What the heck? I love this lyrically. The nostalgia, the like imagery, it's amazing. Oh, I just love the imagery. Oh my god. I... Oh, that outro hurt me. Okay, I love that song for its storytelling. First and foremost, lyrics, the aesthetic, I loved it. But then when he's like, I don't want to say goodbye, I fear you love somebody else. <laughs> Ow, you know? Like, that wasn't me being like, yeah, that was me being like, knife to the heart. Oh my god, I love, I loved that song. Might be my favorite on this album so far, but I don't know. Okay, next song on this album is Suicide. This is very dreamlike. Suicide, baby, oh, I don't like it. I'll be honest, I don't really know what to say about that song. I did really, really like it. That I can say, and I just think... I mean, it's a really sad, deep kind of song. I love the bridge, though. Um, um, I'm not really going to talk about this song because it's, it's the kind of song, like, what do you say, you know? Like, I can't... I don't know. I don't know. I really did like it. Um, I think it will probably be one of my favorites. I'm glad it was the second to last song because now I'm just like... <laughs> Ah, you know? Now we've made it to the very last song on this album, and this song is called Colony. Colony. Oh, it sounds super creepy. <laughs> this sounds like kind of creepy. Does it not? Is it just me? I love this piano piece. Just the buzzing bees and the down tree. Oh, his voice in this is beautiful. 
Everything about this is beautiful though. <laughs> Oh my god. Can I just say yes again to this being the final track on the album? Mm. This with headphones must be amazing. I will get on that after this video. Wow, that song kind of like took a whole different turn than a lot of, like to think that we started off this album with makeup drawer Which was like very upbeat pop like, you know, just that vibe to go from that to Colony Which is an entirely different vibe altogether. Oh that song was eerie was beautiful The lyrics were like ouch and deep and like that theme of death again. Oh my god, Isaac are you good? You guys, he is so talented, especially considering he is only 17 years old. That is insane to me. That's absolutely insane to me. Especially because these songs, he just turned 17 in March. Like, just turned 17. These songs were mostly written when he was 16 and 15 years old. Potentially even 14. <laughs> like, what? Mind blown. Mind blown. Period. Mind blown. I freaking love him, you guys, and I'm definitely going to be listening to him over the next few days to see how I, like, really like these albums, pick out my favorite songs. Oh my god, and speaking of my favorite songs, while I'm editing this, guys, this is my ranking of the two albums, because I'm going to combine them. Um, I'm thinking some of my favorites. Call Me was beautiful. Definitely Suicide and Scorton's Creek. Isaac's Insects. Blueberry Brows, Cologne, Ferrari, those are definitely some of my favorites, but again, after a few days, we'll see how that may or may not change. Thank you guys for recommending Isaac to me. Let me know what other artists you want me to check out. Um, anything in like the singer-songwriter, kind of alternative pop type vibe, I totally love. I'm open to other things as well, but I think this kind of vibe is definitely my favorite. So again, thank you guys for recommending Isaac to me. I appreciate it so much. And thank you guys so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe down below, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!